So it's actually impossible to have a perfectly sustainable wardrobe because to do that you'd have to stop shopping completely and only use what you already have. So maybe the next best option is to only shop from sustainable brands, but the prices there tend to be a lot higher than most of us are used to or even able to afford. So what is the solution then for those of us that still want to build a sustainable wardrobe? In today's video, I'm going to share 10 tips on how to do just that, so keep on watching. So if you've just found out about sustainable fashion, you might have this urge to just get rid of all your fast fashion items and start building a sustainable wardrobe, but I really want to encourage you to stop and not do that. Of course, in the future, you're probably gonna wanna do a declutter and really revamp your wardrobe and rebuild it to reflect your style. But for now, I want to encourage you guys to use the items that you already have and get creative with them. You know, try restyling them in different ways. Try doing different styling challenges with them and the reason why this is such a great way to start is that it really teaches you to just appreciate what you have and value the clothes for what they are the biggest problem with fast fashion is that it kind of tricks you into thinking that clothes are disposable you know they don't really matter you can buy an item one day declutter it the next day it doesn't cost a lot of money and you kind of get stuck in that crazy cycle so when you stop doing that and you kind of look at your clothes and decide that you're gonna wear them and style them and treat them with respect. I think that really changes our mindset and that really puts us into the right direction. So if you are in the process of rebuilding your wardrobe now, the first thing that I would encourage you to do is prioritize items that are more timeless and that you would see yourself wearing for the long term. Instead of buying items that are gonna go out of style and be a waste of money by next season, try to look for items that you can wear season after season and kind of be a long-term investment for your wardrobe. And that's gonna make your money stretch a lot further because you're not gonna be tempted to buy something new every time something is trending. And it's gonna make you see trends for what they are because Trends are just really companies tricking us into thinking that we need something new every time a new season comes around. But if you learn to be confident in what you like and you really nail down your personal style, then it really kind of makes like a shield for you where that temptation is not as strong anymore and suddenly you're just really confident in what you like and trends are not that important. If you don't have a lot of money to spend on your clothes, the next best thing you can do is Look for clothes that are made from natural fibers. I think natural fibers have a reputation of being expensive, but that's not always the case. And the cheapest ones that you can look for is cotton and linen. You can find items that are made from those fibers in really any store that you go to already. So start getting used to checking the tag of the garment that you're looking for. And if it says 100% cotton or 100% linen, then that's already a really great step up from polyester and acrylic. And there's a couple different reasons for that. So. Not only will it feel better on your skin because natural fibers kind of let your skin breathe and they don't trap in that like moisture and make you sweat but it also really washes better so usually when you wash a polyester shirt it'll kind of shrink and twist up and then of course there's fibers like wool and silk which are a little bit higher on the price point but if you're able to find sweaters that have a really high percentage of wool in them they're gonna last much longer than like a 100% polyester sweater Moving on to my favorite point, which is to start shopping secondhand. This is really the most affordable way to build a sustainable wardrobe because you can find such good items secondhand for just a fraction of the price that they would be new. And this is how I personally build the majority of my wardrobe. I love to shop secondhand. And right now in 2022, there's so many great ways to do that, which makes me really happy. So you can either go to your local thrift store, you know, there's places like Goodwill, Value Village, any other place that you have where you live. And then there's also lots of online ways that you can shop secondhand. So my personal favorite is Poshmark. That's where I sell my clothes and I also buy a lot of my clothes. There's also different apps like Mercari, ThreadUp, and depending on wherever you live, I'm sure that there's a place that ships to you. So all it takes is just a little bit of investigation. So yeah, do a little bit of research and I'm sure that you can find something. And I think the biggest bonus of shopping secondhand online is that you can actually look for specific items that you want. So instead of sifting through, you know, tons of racks at your local thrift store, you know, if you're looking for a specific brand, you just type that in, you type your size and 
you know, it'll filter out all those items and you can find something that you're looking for really quickly. And another great thing that you can do is if you find an item that's still for sale at an actual store, go ahead and search for it on the secondhand market and there's a super good chance that someone bought it and it was the wrong size and is trying to resell it. So you'll end up buying it at a fraction of the price that it would be sold new and you're buying an item that's not new from the store, so it's just a really great combo right there. My next tip is find the best quality that you can afford, no matter what store you're shopping at. So if you can afford to shop from a sustainable store, you know, I encourage you to do that because that really is great, but it really is a privilege to be able to afford like a $500 coat or $300 sweater. That's not something that a lot of us are able to do. So I personally think that if you instead just look for a really timeless sweater and natural fiber for, you know, $50 and then you take care of it and you love it and you value it and wear it, that's equally sustainable as buying an actual sustainable sweater. <laughs> because you can still over consume and buy too much sustainable fashion and feel good about yourself, but in reality, you know, you're still buying too much. So if you just try to buy less and buy the best quality that you can afford, that's really a great way to go because even places like Target or H&M will sell items sometimes that are made from natural fiber and you can just tell that they're made a little bit better quality with more attention to detail. So if you look for items like that, I think that you'll be on your way to building your wardrobe. So I don't think there's a brand that's perfectly sustainable because there's so many different categories of sustainability, but you can find brands out there that are striving towards that and making steps in the right direction. And the prices out there can be really reasonable. So if you're used to buying, you know, t-shirts for three to five dollars, try to challenge yourself to buy some for 10 or 15. And I know that that can sound kind of high at first, depending on what you're used to, but I wanna break that down a little bit next and talk about our perceived value of our clothes. So even 50 years ago, clothing used to cost a lot more and people were just willing to pay that for it because that was the value of clothing. But now with fast fashion, brands have conditioned us to think that, you know, our shirt should cost $3, pants should cost $5. And the only reason that these brands are able to sell these items for so cheap is because they're making their clothes now in third world countries and they're paying their workers the cheapest wage that they can get away with. And of course, they're not spending as much money on their material either. So their material is super thin and made from plastic. And then they go on to make new styles every week to make us feel like we have to buy everything new that's coming out and it just becomes this crazy endless cycle. And the reason why sustainable brands cost a lot more is because they really try to make sure that one, they're paying their workers a fair wage and they're also usually trying to make sure that the materials that they're working with are not harming the environment with dyes and chemicals. So that in turn makes the item cost more to produce and then the item costs more to us, the consumers. So now when we know the truth about how clothes are made, we can now make an educated decision for ourselves on how much we're willing to spend on the clothes. And I think for different people, that's gonna be kind of a different answer because for me personally, you know, fashion is not super important to me. So I don't have super high budget for myself on how much I'm gonna spend on my clothes. I wouldn't spend $300 on a sweater, but Maybe for someone else, they have more money to spend or clothing is really important to them. So they're willing to spend their money on that. But I think we can all agree that we can stop buying shirts for $3 because we know that that really is harming the planet and the people that are making them. So I'll link some of my favorite affordable, sustainable brands in the description box if you wanna kind of explore and see what's out there. So my next tip is to maximize the money that you're willing to spend on your clothes. So the first step in doing this is just to start buying less because then your money is not wasted on random items that you don't actually need for your wardrobe. So instead of buying five new shirts a month for $10 each, you know, maybe you could buy two new shirts but spend $25 on them. So then you're buying less items but you're buying better quality items. And it's all about just changing your mindset on shopping. You know, I used to be a really big bargain shopper as well and I would be so proud of how much items I would be able to buy for only $50. But most of them would be made as cheap as possible from polyester and they wouldn't even last me through the year. So when I started rebuilding my wardrobe, I had to really stop myself from buying as much random filler pieces as possible and really stop and think about what is the highest priority item that I needed that year and what would make the biggest impact to my style. So if there's something that you want to buy that costs a little bit more than what you would typically spend, 
you know, you could try to buy less overall over the course of the year and then you'd be able to afford that item. And again, you can find a lot of good quality items for, you know, $10 second hand. So if your budget is much less, you can adjust those numbers. So the idea here is just to spend your money wisely and really think about the quality of your items and just try to buy less overall and make your quality better. So I have this comparison that I want to share on how we view clothes these days. We can look at how clothes are for our body, the way that furniture and decor is for our house. So they're both needed for us to function, you know, we need clothes to go about our day, we need furniture to live in our house comfortably, and we kind of have different styles and colors that we like, and that's all important to us. But that's kind of where the comparison ends. See, for our home, we buy new things from time to time, and we even buy seasonal items, you know, for different holidays. But when the season is over, you know, we pack those items away and we put them to storage. We would never consider like decluttering all our Christmas decorations after Christmas and then buying everything new the next year. That doesn't make any sense and that would be a giant waste of money. But for some reason when it comes to clothes, we view it completely different. It seems like we can easily buy 10 new items for the fall season and then when the season's over, you know, we're tired of them, they're not our style, they're worn out, and we declutter them. And if they fall apart within a few months, it doesn't even upset us that much. We just kind of shrug and say, well, that's kind of what clothes do. I'll just buy something new again next season. And you could say, well, of course we value our home decor more because it costs us more money. And I think that's kind of the point that if we spend a little bit more money on our clothes, then we're gonna actually value them and we're gonna actually treat them well so that they could last us a long time. So I think that's something that we can really work on changing and just changing our mindset on how we look at our clothes. And this is a subject that I feel really passionate about and kind of is what prompted me to start my channel here on YouTube. And that's why I have content on how to find your style because I think when we finally nail down our style, you know, we can start buying clothes a lot less and a lot more thoughtfully and have a lot more intention. And then we're not wasting resources and not just buying things mindlessly and over consuming. So if you never really thought about your style and what kind of wardrobe you want to have, you probably just tend to go shopping and buy whatever looks cute at the moment. And that's kind of one of the reasons why we shop so much because it's kind of like a mindless activity. We know there's not really any thought put into it. We just buy something new and it feels good and exciting and then we want to feel that feeling again and we buy something new again. But that can quickly become a shopping addiction and that's not good for sustainability or for our wallets. So to avoid that, you really need to make a plan and first figure out your style and what you want your wardrobe to look like and then make some really good wish lists. And to do that, you're gonna wanna assess your wardrobe overall and first see if there's anything missing from it that you need to add. If you don't know how to do that, I have a video series on my channel about how to find your style and kind of go through all those steps. I'll link it in the description box if you wanna check it out. But you can even go a step further and just plan out like the top 10 purchases that you wanna make this year that will really impact your style and your wardrobe. And then throughout the year during all the seasonal sales, you know, you can check up on those items and see if you're ready to buy them if they go on sale. And the main thing here is that you're waiting for sales, not looking for sales. Sales can be really tricky because they're designed to make us wanna buy things at a super low price, but there's a difference between waiting for a specific item to go on sale and just browsing the sales page just to see if there's something cute there that's gonna catch your eye. So take advantage of sales, but don't let them take advantage of you. And another thing that you can do here is create really specific wish lists for any items that you wanna get as a gift. So, you know, for your birthday or for Christmas or any other special occasion that's gonna come up and then you're letting them buy the item for you and you're not spending that money. So if you are just starting on your sustainable journey, don't get discouraged if you have a moment of weakness or if you shop too much or buy something from a store that you wanted to stop shopping from. You'll still make mistakes and just know that you don't have to be perfect to be sustainable. I think if we have a much more relaxed approach to this process, we can go a lot further on this journey. So instead of making yourself some super strict rules and then feeling like a failure every time you make a mistake, just keep taking small steps into the direction that you want to go and then a year later you're gonna look back and you're gonna be so proud of how far you've come. The main idea of sustainability is to only use what you need. So be okay with taking your time and not getting everything that you want right away and just sit with what you have and learn to be content with it. 
And to jumpstart your sustainable wardrobe, I encourage you to take a little break from shopping and spend some time figuring out your style and make a plan for what you want your wardrobe to look like. And if you need a little bit of help with that, again, I have the style series that will teach you everything that you need to know and guide you along with all the steps. You can do it. Good luck.